Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Mike. It is Friday, the 3rd of January. We have a lot going on today. So first off, I am very much under the weather. Uh, I've been shivering all night. Uh, woke up, probably have a touch of the flu starting to kick in. But we'll hang it off today with you guys. Uh, secondly, we have this big gap down on United States. The U.S. took out a top Iranian leader at the Baghdad airport. We knew that um, there was a strike at Baghdad of some type. We weren't sure what had happened yesterday, and they waited till after 8 o'clock to release the news, so only futures can react to it. And you can see here we're slowly coming off the bottom. Okay, we're going to talk a lot about this in a minute here. On the economic front today, we also have a lot going on. We have ISM manufacturing and construction spending at 10 Petroleum inventories at 11, rig count at 1, oh yeah, and the Fed minutes at 2 o'clock. Very, 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 very busy day. On top of that, we have a ton of Fed speak coming in here, right, just to just make everything worse, right? They're going to all be running their mouths today too. So just a tremendous amount going on here today, okay? So it's going to be a very, very tough, very volatile day. So let's just jump to our normal routine and go from there on the ES today. You can see here on the ES, this sharp drop, right? Futures opened, right? Everything was going, eight o'clock, nothing going on, nothing going on. And then we just started, as the news started to come out, roll over. Came down, put down, came all the way down to 32.10. So quick 50 point move on the ES. So what does this mean? Well, you know, not a heck of a lot yet. And I think this is where you have to sit back today and you have to have a plan. Now, I have a hedge in place. That's going to definitely help me out there. But you have to look at this and say, okay, ES here has had this huge run. We basically have held the eight-day this entire stretch, right? If we go all the way back into our uh, mid-October since we took it back here on this day, right, with power. The only times we closed below it were these two days right in here, right? This section right here, we had that little bit of a pullback, right? That little one came in and we gone and ramped. And we touched it last week, held new all-time high yesterday. We hit a new all-time high briefly this morning, late last night when the futures open. And you can see now we're below it. And we just here playing with uh, Tuesday's low. We just went below it and came back above it. So you can see the ES tells us new stories. What else is going on while well, crude is spiking? Why is crude spiking? Well, crude spiking on fear that Iran will retaliate and they will basically close the Gulf uh, of Oman to, to shipping which they can easily do. You know, it's very easy for them to do that when they want to. So you got this big spike up to 64 on crude. We'll see how that holds. The reason I say that is because we've seen this before, All right? You remember um, back in here, we had that big spike up here on the attack on the Saudi Aramco plant, right? Look, look where we're at, we're right to that spot. You know, do we hold or not here? You know, we talked about uh, energy for me being an area to, you know, this year could outperform, you know, but it needs a catalyst. This could be it. So overall, a lot going on here right now. A lot of things, a lot of moving parts to all this. So we'll see how that holds it. Bonds, you got a quick spike up in bonds, right? Fear, flight to safety. What do you do when you get when people get afraid? They go to safety. Bonds are safety area. Gold, which was already on the move. Gold got another spike here today. Big spike up, right? We talked about gold coming up and retesting this 1566 area. Well, it's not far off of it already. That was quick. Didn't take much time to do this. So gold here looking maybe to break out. So you have a lot of things going on here. What is interesting to me is the VIX. The VIX here is really not moving all that much. Yep, it took out the other day's highs, but it's already backed way off of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And the VIX here is just not showing the amount of fear you would think you would see in this market. Right. You know, if this was going to be really bad, you would think the VIX would be spiking, going up over 17, 18, heading for 20. Now, maybe it will. But right now, it's certainly not there. All right. So that brings us today. And let's take a quick look at some of our sentiment indicators. Um, put the call. We spiked up a little bit into the hot zone yesterday. Not bad, but getting a little little frothy up here. Right. And could use a little bit of cool off in the put the call. We were there. Spike back up. <laughs> struggling to get a really nice signal here for a while now, nothing big deal. The oscillators are neutral, so really room to run either way. The, New York, the NIMOP, which tracks the New York Stock Exchange, is plus 64. We don't really worry about it. It gets up to plus 200, right? Great signals when it gets under 200. We haven't had one of those in a while here. Nothing going on there. The NIMOP, oops. The NIMOP is very similar, plus 35 here. And our breadth indicator, which we use to track market direction, turned up. 
Now, this is really kind of sometimes deceiving. So breadth overall, the breadth indicator is turning up. In other words, for this thing here, it said the market should continue to trend up based upon how breadth. That said, I will tell you yesterday that breadth was not good until the end. Uh, we've done this a couple times. You can see how breadth opened up and just dropped like a rock yesterday. We were negative, and then we closed at plus 67. And this very, very deceiving action here in the markets lately. And when you look at the SPY, and you know what, what I want to try to point out to you guys is this: is the last couple sessions they've done this. You know, here's New Year's Eve, quick pop, pull, yank. Spent all day down here and hard ramp on big volume into the close. Right? What did we do yesterday? Opened up flat, yanked. Got everybody think that was it, it was over. Spent all day down here and then popped it hard on big volume into the close. And everybody's like, what's the reason for that? Well, institutions like to do their buying and selling into the close. So that's their way of coming in and saying, okay, well, we're going to start, you know, this is where we want to do. So we're going to buy into or sell into the open and the close of the markets. And that's why we're seeing that. So for today, we're currently trading roughly at 321. Okay, so roughly here in the 321 range, which puts us right now below the eight day. If we cannot capture and rehold the eight day, right, and close over it, this trend could be starting to break. Okay, so be aware. Um, you can't tap that. The next area would be the 21 day down at 318.80, right? See it right here, nice and clear. And when you look at this chart, I put a couple in, um, lines on here to make it clear. A 3% pullback is roughly 315.14. So you can see it, marked it. 5% is 308.64. I put these on here so you guys have a nice way you can see that and then tell what's going on, right? So you, that's your first area for today, an area. And then if we really want to get going, we'll see. What you really have to ask yourself is what is Iran likely to do? And that's, that's a tough question to answer here. Uh, is Iran going to just call it a day and walk away and just continue on with their normal activities as they have of harassing U.S. Um, and allies forces using their um, their paramilitary units and, you know, other, other things such as Hezbollah, or are they going to actually take action? Um, you know, action before has been come in the form of them shooting down our drone, which we didn't respond to. They attacked uh, Saudi Aramco, which nobody responded to. So here they got a response. They've gotten a nice response. They had their top general who's in charge of all these operations taken out um, basically an assassination at the Baghdad airport. So we'll see how this plays out. Uh, at this point, um, very, very careful here. Think carefully. Um, you know, I see this market doing a lot of things in either direction here. Very possible that this market just says, uh, you know what, I'm done with this. Uh, let's sell off. Let's take a little bit of a rest here. Uh, or could say we're going to wait and see what happens on, on Monday, right? If there's nothing happens over the weekend, this market may say, okay, we feel pretty good. Let's get back to going here. So, you know, you need to manage your risk accordingly. This, you know, I now have told you guys for the last or sessions, I've had a hedge on my account. And, uh, you know, that's allowing me to keep my longs and trade around it. So for today, on this crude spike, there's a couple things to look at. So first off, let's look at the strong names. If the market wants to bounce, look at the names that have been strong and are acting better. Notice Apple here, already two plus off the lows, right? Putting a low down here of 194, roughly 194.35, right? It's almost three off the lows, right? Ripping higher, okay? Apple, very strong here, off the lows, doesn't care. Tesla had, and they have an upgrade to 330 um, at RBC Capital from 295. Tesla here, also their China news that they started delivering the cars and the cars are cheap, 43,000 for the Model uh, the Model 3, whatever it is there. Uh, you can see this one quickly bouncing. So names like this may, may not care so much, especially Tesla. AMD, which I don't really have an interest in touching up here, I think it's just run too much, but you can see quickly coming back, right? Wasted no time moving up over uh, almost 70, uh, almost 80 cents quickly up on this. So you can see some of the stronger names reacting. Boeing, because it's a defense name, also up here, right? So maybe this ignites Boeing. You can see it, it came in, but it's pouncing up. Lockheed Martin, Lockheed Martin, also a name. Look at this, ripping here, right? General Dynamics, your defense names are strong. You can look at names in the energy sector today. Cop, already going up, right? Schlumberger. Ready pushing, rig, another name, ready up big, right? These names are all moving. You can play the XLE. <coughs> no, it's gonna be a long day. Uh, you can see how these names want to play today, okay? So keep an eye on those. If we continue to soar over, nugget to the long side is a possible play, right? You can see here, nugget's up already strong. See how it handles it if it comes in. 
VXX, play on the VIX. If the volatility spikes, VXX will go with it. Then this thing will take off. So we'll see if this one wants to wake back up. Right now, it traded back into and did not break above the high of uh, – of Tuesday. So, you know, the VIX went above it, the VXX did not. So, you know, there's a lag here. You know, this tells me that they're still trying to play for a low volatility environment. Typically, when we have fear in this market, the, the ETFs lead the VIX they are, because they're piling in with, with um, buying it. We're not seeing that yet. Now, something to consider here, and that is this, is that the, the, the VIX and the VXX have been back in this for the last year in this very low, um, volatility environment and when you look at the weekly chart here right on this remember when we had that big blow off here when they blew up all those um, low volatility ETFs yeah, now we know that they've repiled back into those and they've restarted that trade through here I'm not saying that we're getting a move up to 60 guys I'm saying though that you could get another big push up here potentially on the VIX at some point and the VXX products because of that low volatility uh, blow off. Just something to keep in the back of your mind. So those are things I would watch today. Um, you know, Facebook, I have that call overnight. That lotto is probably worthless here. Nothing you can do about it. You know, it is what it is. You know, these are events that happen. And, you know, we'll have to see how this plays out. Bottom line is you need to think here what your risk exposure is short to medium term. How do you want to be positioned? And how do you want to be looking at the markets here as we move ahead? And then you can go from there and, you know, let's see how things, uh, how things play out here. Um, you know, market could just absorb this again and say, okay, the other reason the market could use this as the excuse it's needed to sell and say, we want to take some risk down. Nobody can tell you what to do. Having a hedge in place is going to help me out. So again, if you want to play it alongside, I'd watch the stronger names and as well as the defense names and maybe the oil names. And, uh, you know, on top of the VXX and nugget, you could also play things like the SQQ. Right, this is the bearish ETF that tracks to the QQQ. So if you want to play something long as a bearish play, you would play here on the SQQ and things like that. Hope everybody's okay today. I wish you all well. Um, hopefully I make it through the day. I'm keep medicating myself and we'll go from there. And I'll catch you guys all live at nine o'clock.